So, welcome to this uh, dissertation uh, where Irida will defend her thesis, Intelligent Partitioning for IoT, Design Space Exploration for Data Intensive IoT Nodes. Uh, I'm Professor Matthias O'Nils and I've been the main supervisor of this work and uh, Mohamed Imran has been the co-supervisor. Uh, first of all, in this session, I would like to invite Professor Andreas Gerstauer from University of Texas at Austin. Uh, that uh, will be the opponent uh, discussing this work. Then we have uh, three people in the grading committee. We have uh, Professor Johan Lilius from Åbo Akademi in Finland. We have uh, Dr. Ingenieur Tino Hutschenreuter at the Institute IMMS Ilmenau in Germany. And then we have the internal member, which is Professor Ting Ting Sang uh, from Mid Sweden University. We also have a reserve for the grading committee if something would go wrong. Johan Sidén, Associate Professor at Mid Sweden University. The procedure for this dissertation is that Irida will give a presentation of her work uh, and then we will have a short break uh, where we will remove the gear for the YouTube broadcast and then we will resume uh, only on Zoom. And uh, then we will start with the discussion of this thesis where the opponent uh, Professor Gesslauer will lead the discussion with Irida. Uh, when this is finished, the questions goes over to the grading committee. And finally, to the audience on Zoom can uh, ask questions. When we have finished that part, uh, we will have a break in Zoom and the grading committee, the opponent and I will go into another Zoom meeting and have a discussion on this thesis and the grading committee will make the decision on the grade. Uh, so that's the procedure and I hand it over to you Irida. And before you start, uh, I would ask you to, if you want to present the thesis at its is or if you have any corrections, major corrections. Um, I will present it as it is. Ah. And, um, Yes, if any issues comes up, I, I will address them during the yes. discussion. Good. Thank oh. you. Huh? Okay, thank you everyone for uh, participating in this PhD defense. I will not lose any more time and I will start with this uh, presentation. So the title of this uh, PhD thesis is Intelligence Partitioning for the Internet of Things with a focus mainly with an emphasis on design space exploration for a data intensive IoT node. As the title already suggests, the focus is mainly on the Internet of Things, this ubiquitous term that refers to the interconnection of a variety of uh, sensing processing and communication devices, all interlaced with one another to provide a set of services and goods that improve our quality of life with regards to sustainability. When we think about uh, Internet of Things application, they vary significantly amongst one another. And so do the sensors utilized in these IoT applications. If we would classify these IoT sensors in two major categories, then we would have on the one hand sensors that produce scalar data like uh, humidity or temperature sensors. And on the other hand, we would have sensors that would produce a much higher volume of data in the range of vector or matrices. And the representant for that could be optical sensors. The focus of this thesis is mainly on the later, so on high data volume uh, sensor nodes and more specifically on wireless vision sensor networks. Uh, with 
wireless vision sensor network, we mean that we have a smart sensor node uh, consisting in a vision, vision sensor, sorry. And we refer to it as a smart node because basically we have embedded in the same node not only the sensing component, but also the processing and the communication component. Throughout our analysis, we consider this uh, network uh, and we, consi we consider this network consisting on several different computational entities, not only the sensor node, and therefore we have represented here also fog and cloud computing. Furthermore, one of the main constraints that we consider throughout our analysis is that we design the smart sensor node as a battery operated or energy harvester operated device. The reason for this is that we want this smart sensor node to be easily deployed in a wide range of uh, scenarios. And uh, for example, if we look at the different cases where we can deploy wireless vision sensor networks, they would vary from smart city, industrial monitoring or environmental monitoring. In these scenarios, the presence of a power plug would be quite restricting to the applications. Therefore, by designing this smart sensor node as a battery operated device, we enable a wider range of uh, applications to be deployed. Uh, this, of course, comes with major drawback um, because we need to put a significant constraint in the node energy consumption. And the problem of the sensor node energy efficiency has been present in research for many years. And the two uh, key approaches towards this have been that either all the processing have been allocated in the smart sensor node. And in that case, for example, we have the processing energy consumption in the node at its highest peak, or we have shifted the processing towards a server and uh, we allocate there all the processing and we reduce the processing energy consumption in the smart sensor node. In contrast with the processing energy consumption, we have the communication energy, which achieves its highest peak when we have all the processing done remotely in the server. And in that case, we are basically capturing data with a sensor and streaming continuously, so we put a enormous workload on the communication link. While more we shift the computational towards the smart sensor node, uh, the more we reduce the data volume and therefore we lower the communication energy consumption. However, as I showed before, the node energy consumption is a compound of both the processing and of the communication component. Therefore, in order to optimize the node energy consumption, we need to take in consideration both of these components and their interaction with one another and optimize the node overall energy consumption. To address this, we have designed a method called intelligence partitioning that basically refers to the distribution of the computational load between the different computational entities. In our analysis, we consider three computational entities, the node, the fog, and the cloud, and also the intermediate data volume transferred between these entities. In this slide, we can see a schematic representation of this node, fog, cloud environment where the smart sensor node is represented by the Zinc 7010 FPGA board. The fog node is represented by the Raspberry Pi 3B plus, and the cloud is represented by the Amazon EC2 uh, instance. We consider in this case only forward communication from the smart sensor node towards the fog and the cloud. And also the fog node is allocated in the gateway. Therefore, the node to fog communication is wireless communication, while uh, the communication towards the cloud is, is uh, internet based communication. Regarding the smart sensor node energy consumption, it would consist of three main components. 
the sensing, the processing and the communication component. Throughout our intelligence partitioning analysis, we only concede when we refer to the node energy consumption, the overall node energy consumption, uh, we actually refer to the processing and the communication component and we omit the sensing energy consumption. The reason for this is that uh, the sensing energy consumption wouldn't be affected by the uh, different partitioning configurations of the processing workload. So if we partition these computational tasks throughout the different uh, computational entities, it still wouldn't affect the sensing energy consumption. Regarding the processing energy consumption, it is represented as the sum of the energy used to process each of the tasks implemented in the smart sensor node, while the communication component is the energy required to transfer the intermediate data volume uh, produced at that partition point. Moving forward, we have the wireless communication link uh, between the smart sensor node and the fog. And uh, in this case, we consider a simple two node model. And we have taken in consideration 10 different communication technologies. We have classified these communication technologies in three major groups. The local area network group, represented by Bluetooth, uh, four, uh, Bluetooth Low Energy 4.2, 5 and by Wi-Fi. And uh, the key characteristic in this group is the fact that they have a small communication range in about 100 meters. The next communication group is the cellular, represented by GPRS, HSPA and LTE CAT4. And these are all mobile communication technologies, where a key characteristic is the asymmetric data rates between upload and download. And what we care at this point is only the upload because we are only doing forward communication from the sensor towards the remaining entities. The last communication group is the IoT group, represented by Zigbee, NB-IoT, LoRa and LTE CAT1. In this group, we could have allocated Zigbee and LTE CAT1 to LAN and cellular, respectively. But because they have been designed with a main focus towards IoT applications and for energy efficiency, then we allocated them in the IoT group. Throughout this thesis, I have addressed four different research questions. And I will start now with the first. Can we improve the energy efficiency of the smart sensor node by partitioning the computational load? To address this question, I have designed a people counting scenario relying on an infrared imaging sensor, on the Zinc 7010 FPGA and on Bluetooth Low Energy 5 communication. Regarding the intelligence partitioning configurations, we have considered not only node server partitioning, but also hardware software partitioning of the tasks. In this slide, we can see the energy consumption, the overall energy consumption for the different partition points. And uh, I have highlighted in red the case when all the tasks are implemented in the smart sensor node. And uh, in this case, we see that we have a moderate energy consumption amongst the other, compared to other partitions. The following case is the one where all the tasks have been implemented in the server. And we see that in this case, we have the highest energy consumption amongst all the partitions. And uh, we have highlighted in yellow uh, the six partition configurations that uh, result in the distribution of the computational tasks between the node and the server. In this case, in partition 3, 6 and 10, we see that we obtain the optimal overall energy consumption. And these configurations basically rely on background modeling and uh, subtraction and segmentation implemented in the smart sensor node, while the remaining tasks are implemented in the server. In this case, we have also reduced the data volume from a grayscale image with 8-bit per pixel representation 
down to uh, one bit per pixel of a binary image. In conclusion, we proved with this design case that for a given application relying on traditional image processing system, there can be an intermediate partition point that provides the highest energy efficiency. The following research question is, if there is interdependence between processing and communication, how does it affect the data-intensive smart sensor node with processing partitioning? To address this question, I am again relying on the people counting scenario, but unlike the previous case, I am using all 10 communication technologies. Here you, ca you can see plotted uh, all the different intelligence partitioning configurations with uh, combined with the different communication technologies. So every data point represents a combination of a partition point and a communication technology. As we consider also hardware software partitioning of the computational tasks, we have more than one uh, data points for the same communication technology in the same partition. Furthermore, in this plot we have also considered real-time performance constraint where we compare the overall latency to the uh, frame rate, sorry, to the frame rate of the imaging sensor. And uh, basically we have omitted all the data points that couldn't meet the timing constraint. Each of these columns of data points represent the intermediate uh, data volume produced. And as we shift from the left hand side towards the right, we are shifting actually also the computational load from the node towards the server. Uh, I, I didn't mention that uh, we are also considering in this case uh, different data reduction techniques such as data aggregation and uh, image compression. So here we look closer one at one of the methods, so data aggregation. And basically we have implemented all the processing pipeline in the smart sensor node and we transfer only the final result towards the server. In the case with data aggregation, we are not transferring this result for every frame captured, but we are aggregating it over a predefined time interval. Uh, as we can see, this uh, this method provides very little optimization. So basically, in a comparison of the two most optimal uh, points in terms of energy consumption, the overall improvement from that aggregation is of about only 10%. Moving forward to the next case, we have image compression, where we have implemented lossless uh, compression with the PNG algorithm for the uh, grayscale images captured from the imaging sensor. The reason why we chose to use this lossless compression algorithm is that uh, we had quite a low resolution image to begin with and using a lossy compression algorithm would come at, a c at the cost of uh, affecting the performance of the whole image processing uh, application. Uh, what we can see in this case from the implementation is that uh, unlike our expectations, the overall node energy consumption deteriorates in the case with compression. And this is due to the um, trade-off between processing and communication, where the additional processing workload put uh, due to the image compression algorithm is not compensated by the reduction in the communication energy consumption due to the data reduction. Moving to the next case, we have again image compression, but in this case we are doing binary image compression of the binary image produced either after segmentation or after morphology. What we can see in this case is that the data volume produced post compression is different for the case, with, uh, for the case after segmentation and the case after morphology. The reason for that is that during morphology operations, we reduce more noise from the, uh, we reduce the noise from this binary image that we have, and therefore we enable a better compression rate. 
again, if we compare the most optimal points in terms of energy consumption between three different uh, partitions, we can see that for Bluetooth Low Energy 5, we obtain the highest energy efficiency in the case when we are uh, implementing binary image compression after morphology. And actually, this data point was the most optimal amongst all the different partitions that we considered. To conclude, we showed that the combined effects of processing configuration and the communication technology do define the energy efficient partition configuration. Moving to the next research question, we have in a wireless sensor network environment consisting of a data intensive smart sensor node, would node fog partitioning of the computational load affect or even improve the energy efficiency of the node? To address this question, we relied on three design cases that have different computational requirements, but most importantly, that have very different data volume. The first design case is the people counting scenario with data volume going from four to about three kilobytes per frame. And uh, we have in this case plotted the energy consumption of the smart sensor node considering partitioning configurations relying on the node, the fog and the cloud entities. Each data point is a combination of different partition configuration and a different communication technology. I would like to underline in this case that for visual representation, we have chosen to group these data points, but this grouping is not uh, strict to these uh, representations. So there are data points that don't strictly belong to that group, but is more for uh, enabling the understanding of these data points. So this Three major groups that we have defined is the node fog partitioning group represented by A, the node cloud partitioning group represented by B, and the all remotely group represented by C. All the data points that have extremely high energy consumption and latency that to the point that makes them obsolete for considering them for implementation, we have grouped them in the category D. What we can see in this plot is that from an energy consumption perspective, we have uh, very little variation, uh, very little differences between scenario A and B, while C is the worst performing, and that is the case when we are implementing everything remotely, either in the fog or in the cloud or together. In terms of latency, we can see some clear distinction between the different partition points and that is mainly due to the internet communication link. So when we transfer the data towards the cloud, this creates major, uh, a, a higher uh, latency and therefore we have this kind of visible distinction from latency aspect. Moving to the next scenario, we have the particle detection case where the data volume goes now from 259 bytes up to almost 256 kilobytes. The interesting aspect in this case is that we have overlapping regions between A, B and C. From a latency perspective, what these overlapping regions show is that, um, what these overlapping regions show is that the, um, latency due to the wireless link is significantly high. Uh, so we are meeting wireless link uh, constraints uh, and we have such a high latency that it becomes comparable to the internet communication latency. And again, these wireless communication limitations are shown also in terms of energy consumption. If we see these overlapping regions, where basically due to the high workload that the wireless link uh, is putting, it is basically defining the overall node energy consumption. And that it becomes comparable to the case where everything is implemented remotely. Similarly to the people counting scenario, even in the pedestrian detection scenario, we have these overlapping regions. Uh, 
In this case, the data volume is much higher. We go from about 11 kilobyte per frame down up to almost one uh, megabyte per frame, which is significantly high. And what we can see is that now the data points are closely, uh, closely coupled in the regions of B and C. And only a few data, po data points from region A, where basically are, uh, which basically represent the case that all the processing has been implemented in the smart sensor node. And these are the only points that provide the best efficiency in terms of both latency and energy consumption. The remaining data points show comparable um, latency and energy. And uh, this is due to the wireless communication limitations. To summarize, our results on three different design cases with significantly different data volume prove the important role of processing and communication inter interdependence in the performance of the smart sensor node. The fourth and last research question is, can high-level estimates enable the design space exploration of an en energy-efficient, data-intensive smart sensor node? To address this question, we have developed a design space exploration method. And basically, this method consists on three main components. The first component is processing exploration, where we try to uh, De uh, define, extrapolate the region of the design where we should focus our optimization efforts. The following component is the energy budget in which we try to uh, define the available energy consumption for implementing an additional computational task based on an estimate of the output data volume. The third component is the node offloading component, which basically is what we have seen so far, where we will consider the different partitioning configurations and which one would provide the highest energy efficiency. For this design space exploration method, we are providing as input only high-level estimates. And this is very important because um, it enables deployment of this design space exploration method at early design stages. And basically what we are providing as input is simply the number of floating point operations and other operations, which we can extrapolate from the algorithm itself. And uh, the intermediate data volume between the different processing tasks. We use this number of operations together with the values obtained from a, uh, from a specific um, processor. So in this case, in our analysis, we have relied on an ARM M4 CPU. And uh, we use this kind of data in order to estimate the processing energy consumption for different partitioning configuration. While we rely on the intermediate data volume to uh, calculate the, uh, to estimate the communication energy consumption component. In this analysis, we will also rely on five uh, energy constraints, and uh, therefore they are depicted in this table related to different battery types. So uh, hash one to hash five represent the different energy constraints. To give an example of how to use this design space exploration method, I will rely on the AlexNet scenario, which is a convolutional neural network that has five different convolutional layers, the two fully connected layers and the softmax layer. In this scenario, we have uh, extrapolated seven different partition points and we are uh, Sorry, and the data volume goes from about 154 kilobytes down to about one kilobyte per frame. As I mentioned before, the first stage in the de design space exploration method is the processing exploration, where basically we try to see which region, in which region of the design we should focus optimization efforts. 
In this plot, we can see that the interrupted lines denoted by the identifiers hash1 to hash5 are the different energy constraints, while we have color-coded the curves of the energy consumption for different communication technologies. Furthermore, the different, uh, the color-coded da uh, data points represent the overall node energy consumption at this partition point, at a specific partition point for a specific communication technology. In this, uh, for this scenario, we could see that uh, partition, uh, partition two to four are the ones with the most uh, significant processing energy consumption. And therefore, it would be interesting to evaluate further how, uh, how we could optimize the, their implementation by relying on a hardware accelerator, parameter quantization, or image compression. We will look further on into image compression, and that will be to give an example of the energy budget. As I mentioned before, in the energy budget, we try to estimate the energy consumption available to add an additional computational task based on the estimate output data volume. Uh, so in partition one, what we were doing is that we were just streaming the data that was captured from the imaging sensor, and this data was about 154 kilobytes per frame. In literature, it has been referred that a compression rate up to seven times uh, leaves unaffected the accuracy of AlexNet. Therefore, we define this as a maximum threshold of the compression that we can implement, and we denote it with D1. So uh, the compressed data uh, volume cannot be lower than 22 kilobytes. In investigating for an additional computational task, we saw that there exist two cases. The first case is when we try to implement an additional task in order to improve the energy efficiency of the smart sensor node. And in that case, we remain within the, the same energy constraint region, and uh, the processing energy consumption would be, would be nothing else than the difference uh, between the initial ener communication, ener communication energy consumption and the reduced energy consumption afterwards. So for processing, in that case, we, would, uh, we shouldn't exceed the amount of energy saved from communication. And here we can see that is highlighted the case for LTE CAT1. The second case would be the one where we try to implement an additional computational task in order to meet a new energy constraint. And uh, if we look at the case of Bluetooth Low Energy 5, we can see that in order to meet the energy constraint three, then we need to shift to a new data volume and the available energy consumption for the processing would be defined as the difference between the energy constraint and the sum of the sensing energy consumption and the new communication energy consumption. The third part of the design space exploration method is node offloading, where we will look at which partitioning would be optimal. If we take this design case as it is, then of course the most optimal partition point is the one that I have highlighted, where basically in the case with Bluetooth Low Energy 5, we obtain the highest um, energy efficiency, and uh, basically all the processing will be done in the server. An interesting point would be to investigate further with uh, optimization in, region, in partitions two to four, and they could provide a new most, uh, most uh, efficient partition point, or due to the implementation of image compression that I mentioned earlier, we could reach a new uh, energy efficiency level. In order to to make sure that 
the usage of this uh, intermediate data volume was relevant and was needed for this design space exploration <coughs> method, we did a further analysis where we analyzed how image size and content affect uh, the selection of, uh, affect this intelligence partitioning and the optimal partition point. Uh, the design case used in this analysis is the one depicted by this uh, flow graph. And uh, basically what we observed for that case is that the image content would leave unaffected this optimal partition point, but the image size had a um, was a key component in uh, defining this uh, optimal partition point. And this is very important for our design space exploration method. To summarize, we provided a design space exploration method for high data volume sensor node that facilitates the design of an energy efficient sensor node based on not only these high level estimates of data volume and computation, but most significantly, it relies on the processing and communication interdependence. These were the four research questions that I have addressed in my uh, thesis. And uh, the key conclusions to that, uh, the, the key points of this are the intelligence partitioning method that enables us to identify the optimal, uh, the most energy efficient partition point in a given design. And uh, it relies on this communication and computation interdependence to navigate through these partitions. Furthermore, we have expanded this, this, this intelligence partitioning method and developed it into a design space exploration method for these data intensive IoT nodes. And uh, relying only on high level estimates. We proved throughout this thesis that the interdependence of processing and communication can have a defining role in the energy efficiency of the IoT node. While we try to address different aspects of the intelligence partitioning method, of course there are many more questions that arise and that would be interesting to address further on. And uh, one of them, for example, would be the inclusion of uncertainty in this model and uh, more specifically to, to analyze how jitter, mainly in communication, would affect these uh, partitions, would affect defining the most uh, efficient point. Another point of interest would be to uh, investigate further on the effects of intermediate partitioning in a CNN, because as we saw in that case, uh, early stages, the early convolutional layers are quite heavily, uh, heavy in computational load and put quite a high strain in the processing energy consumption. So it would be interesting to investigate further if it is possible to do, to do a partitioning in CNNs and how can we provide this and how can we model it. I would like to conclude this presentation by showing that the people counting scenario that we have, uh, that I have been using recurringly in this uh, thesis is actually deployed in uh, Solefto and it is used for urban planning. This was my presentation. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Rida. Uh, so now we move on to the next point, which is the discussion of the thesis together with the opponent, Professor Kestlauer. But first we will uh, have a short break where we, about five minutes, is that enough? 10, <laughs> 10 minutes, uh, where we will uh, rearrange the lecture hall here to remove the stuff for broadcasting on YouTube. So we'll be back in 10 minutes.